this is real. I hold it, I own it outright, and it runs no counterparty risk. In fact, it is the only financial asset, not according to me, but according to the, well, according to me, but primarily according to the Bank for International Settlements, the only financial asset that runs no counterparty risk, the only one, period, the only one. Everything else is all counterparty risk and they're getting nervous about that risk. Not just at Evergrande, but all of the other big developers in China. Kaisa misses wealth product payout on unprecedented stress. In fact, they say that their investment product is guaranteed and it's overdue. How many times have I heard, but it's guaranteed? More than I care to hear about. Because again, any guarantee is only based on the claims paying ability of the entity that gives you that guarantee. That's not a very good guarantee, to tell you the truth. So their bonds and shares tumbled on Thursday on mounting concerns over its financial health. The company joins troubled industry giant Evergrande in see, seeing its cash crunch reach the point where it hurt investor ver, investors in high yielding wealth products. Well, what that wealth is, it goes to Kaia and Evergrande and any of the companies. And there, there's a point that I want to make here too, because I know that there are people out there that think that debt is a good thing and leverage and all of that and this environment because it's debt-based and it's so critical, blah, blah, blah. But as I have said before, I will say it again and I'll probably say it again in the future too. I'm good with debt as long as it's fixed rate debt and you have the ability to boom, pay it off in a moment's notice. Because if you can't, then whatever asset you bought with that debt, like a mortgage, goes away. This is scary. I understand that. Chinese developer controlled by the government is latest to plunge. So the finance ministry controls just under 30% of Sino Oceans or Sino Oceans shares and they're plunging too. So could that indicate, could that indicate that the population, that the public is losing confidence in the government? Because it certainly could. It's not just the real estate, and real estate is a big issue in China since so many, that's where so much of Chinese wealth is held. But food inflation prices in China climbed every single week of October. And then what they did, what's the solution? Delete the data. It's just like the solution is always change the formula, not the behavior, not what's happening. Let's just hide what's really happening as best we can. Because what are they going to do? The latest weekly report from China's Commerce Ministry confirmed a trend of rising food prices. But the data released Tuesday afternoon was deleted from the ministry's site as of Wednesday morning. It had shown that the week ended October 31st saw a food price increase of 3.7% from the prior week with pork prices rising by 10.6% and that of chicken eggs up by 4.4%. Now look, the overall food, whatever. Uh, the overall food price gains followed a 4.3% increase the prior week. Now, here's the thing. During a hyperinflationary event, food becomes your biggest issue, your biggest one. So what have I done? I have turned my property into an urban farm. I have made sure that no matter what happens, my family and I and neighbors and friends and people I don't know can still eat. I, I wish I could feed the world, that's the truth, but I, I can't do that. But I am certainly doing my best to feed as many people as possible. 
Do not wait. Maybe you can't convert or don't want to convert your entire property into food production, but you really need to make sure that your food security is in place. That's critical. And there are lots of different ways to do it. We'll, we'll talk about that more in the future. I have some things coming up. But we are seeing the food inflation in China where what makes people feel wealthy in China? It's their real estate, which has now been plateauing. You know, taking on debt to create wealth creates the appearance of wealth, but not real wealth because it can go away even faster than you accumulated it. This is where you go for safety. Primarily this, secondarily that. But what does the Bank for International Settlements say? Gold has been empirically proven to serve as an inflation hedge at least over longer periods of time. Why? Because in the short term, they have the lovely spot market which is a Wall Street invention designed to control how you think about gold and silver. It's a trading tool. It does not really represent either one of these physical in your possession. So what's an investor to do? Well, look at this. Investors throw cash at any ETF with inflation in the name. We've seen that before. Put crypto in the name, they'll buy it. It doesn't even have to do anything with it. And so here we go. Every single ETF with the word inflation in either its name or description, every single ETF has posted inflows so far this year. A rare degree of one-way conviction among the investing masses because they think they have no choice. We have been taught to think that the only thing to invest in is what Wall Street tells you to invest in. Stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, even real estate that has been converted into a Wall Street asset as we've seen. But transitory or not, it's real. And it's in advisors' faces, and there aren't a lot of great alternatives available for them to solving the inflation conundrum. Oh, inflation management is really not about growth or investing. It's just about preserving buying power. Boom! This has done it for thousands of years. This is what we'll do it today, too.